very much all of you for, for coming on to Newsnight and talking Thank to you. our audience. Thank you. TV host Caroline Flack took her own life three years ago. It was after she learned that she would be facing prosecution for allegedly assaulting her then boyfriend. The 40-year-old was vulnerable and on the night she was arrested by police had to be taken first to hospital because she had self-harmed. Originally, the Crown Prosecution Service recommended the Love Island presenter should simply be cautioned. A senior Metropolitan Police officer appealed against that and a charge ultimately followed. Last month, Caroline Flack's mum received an apology from the Met because they hadn't kept any formal record of why they had charged her daughter with assault. In her first broadcast interview since that apology, I asked Christine Flack whether she accepted it. No, no, because I still don't know why she was um, charged. Um, they haven't um, said why there was no notes taken, why nothing was recorded, um, and it just seems strange to me. It just seems wrong. I don't know whether they're, they're covering something, there were reports and now it doesn't seem enough to have charged her, or whether it was just being done on the spur of the moment and, and they didn't record anything. You believe the Met failed on a number of levels the night that Caroline was arrested. Just talk us through what you think went wrong. Um, when they arrived at the house, they'd had a call from Lewis Burton um, to say that, that there was a fight going on and that Caroline had hurt herself as well. Um, they then, the police arrived, they had called the ambulance on the way because they knew Carrie was hurt and they arrived but there was a lot of them and again I, I don't know why so many police turned up but they did um, they realized she was seriously hurt so she was taken to hospital and um, then instead of letting her go home and maybe taking her back and charging her because she was in such a vulnerable state um, they took her back to the police station and held her in a cell for 24 hours. And she had been, they did the right thing, they took her to hospital yes. because she had yes. hurt herself. Yeah. She had cut herself. She had cut herself to the muscle, her wrists, yeah. And, but then taking her back to the police station, you, you, you're puzzled as to why that was the right thing to do. Totally, and I think it started there. Because usually, and this is speaking to other police um, since then, um, a duty sergeant has the authority to say, well, you know, you can go home and you, you must come back and they come back unless they think she's a danger. Um, and the IOPC said that they couldn't see that she was a danger. And did Caroline ask to see a doctor in that time? She asked to see a doctor and it, was, it took two hours to get a doctor there because he was busy elsewhere. And yet the DI who decided that a caution wasn't enough and appealed against it and, and it ultimately, as we know, led to an assault charge, when she was at the inquest into Caroline's death, she said she'd do exactly the same again. Yeah. What do you think of that then? Dreadful. Would you like to meet that officer in person, face to face? Yes. And talk to her? Yeah. And what would you say to her? Why didn't you go and speak to Caroline? Or speak to Lewis? Or it was meant to be an evidence-led case. They took no evidence. So you are three years on from Caroline taking her life. And you still don't know. You've still got this big question, why, 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 why? did they proceed to charge her with, with assault. Mm. How do you live with that? It's, it's, it's difficult and it's hard to drop. Um, I suppose I do it just for Carrie, just, just to let the truth be out there, that she wasn't an abuser. You know, it had been an accident. Um, she admitted to doing it, but because she then said it was an accident, that went against her. If Caroline hadn't been charged with assault, do you believe she would still be alive today? I do. No, I, I really do. Because it, it hurt her so much to think people would think that of her.
but she wasn't someone that would assault someone. And I think once all the pictures came out in the newspapers and things written about her and, and social media, they just, they pick up the bad. There was a lot of good, but Carrie wasn't reading the good. She was only reading the bad. You know, they're still writing things in the paper that are untrue about Caroline. Even now? Even now. Yeah. Like what, for example? It was about her finances and totally, totally untrue. And Which newspaper was this? The Sun. And they did apologise when I went to them. I said, where have you got this from? They said, oh, it was someone that doesn't usually write that column was working and didn't check the facts. And when, when did that happen? Um, just a couple of months ago. Right. So you got in touch with them and said this is untrue. True, yeah. And they accepted that. Yeah. And apologised in the paper or to you? Or? I think they did apologise in the paper. I didn't see that. Mm. But they then they sent me a, uh, an email. Right. Yeah, just saying, would I like them to give some money to charity? And does that make up for them, printing untruths? No, it, it, it can't do. Once it's in the paper, nobody else, they may not read the apology, but lots of people will have read that. I wish I'd done all this before Carrie took her life. I wish I'd done more then. That's my biggest regret, that I didn't speak up then and do things. Because um, now it's whatever happens, it's, it's too late. Do you see any parallels, if you like, of the way Caroline was treated by some sections of the media and in the, the media attention around the case of missing mum, Nicola Bully? I do, yeah. I, it, it, it's the speculation. Um, people saying that what they thought happened and, you know, the press um, just printing what they want to print. They don't know the truth. And, you know, it just made a, a, a circus around Carrie and it made a circus around that poor mum. You have a particular bench that you go to every week, which is Caroline's bench. It's a place where you can go and, and just think about her. Um, it's, it's a lovely woodlands and it's a place we can meet. I meet with the children on anniversaries. It's, it's lovely. I'm guessing that you think about Caroline every day. Yep, every, every day, every hour, yep, the whole time. I think about funny things, I must say, you know, with her with brothers and sisters we do laugh and like me doing this, she'd go, oh, mum, you know, it'd be like, um, and then just sad things that I won't, you know, she was having such a nice life, she was on such a high and she won't be there, you know, she won't see her nieces grow up, Willow, who she adored and her other nieces and nephews. She won't see them and that's sad. Christine Flack and that interview was produced by Ellie Jacobs. In a statement, the Met said a police watchdog review didn't identify any misconduct in relation to the handling of Miss Flack's arrest. If you want to contact the BBC Action Line for help with any of the kind of issues that came up in my conversation with Christine Flack, 